2-1-1. He's really got a job on his hands. He's the reigning world champion, Chris Megler, and he has won the event two years running. And that really is no mean feat at all in banger racing because uh, it's probably the most unpredictable kind of motorsport that you could possibly imagine. 15 laps. And number 10 is a long way clear at the moment, Terry Kirk. But a quick run out to the front. In the Mark II, the majority of them, as you can see, are Mark IIs. Chris Medler uh, had to start right at the back, being the world champion, and that means he's got 20-odd other cars he's got to get past. But uh, he'll start disposing of the opposition at the back very, very quickly indeed. The battle wagon with that beautiful rocking horse, uh, number 52, Bob Alderman, trying to get a little bit of grip. And that's the lead car, number 10, Terry Kirk. Or he was the leader when we last looked. Things changed very quickly in Bangor Racing. And for old 52, Bob Alderman, he's uh, going to be well and truly out of this one now. The 73 crunches into him, Chris Colliver. <laughs> 93, Blondie Melbourne. He's a former world champion, so he knows what he's doing. In fact, he's just nipped up into the lead. Number 10, we've lost somewhere along the way. Poor old Terry Kirk got the chop somewhere along the way, and it's number 93 there, Blondie Melbourne, who has now shot up into the lead. 52, the battle wagon's got himself going again, but there's a little bit of a melee down on that bench. And that uh, is going to present problems for some of the following traffic, because the track is almost blocked there, and that means they're going to have to go right through on the inside. Chris Colliver is the man who's trailing the bumper. And look at that mix-up there. And believe you me, that mud is really deep on the inside of the track. You can sink up to your axles very, very quickly there, and that's why most of them prefer to force their way through the gaps in the middle. It doesn't really matter how you get through in this sort of racing, as long as you get through. Patrick Carton in number 71. Seems such a shame when you think what a beautiful motor car that was in its day. 73, Chris Colliver, that bumper's still hanging on. Somebody will put his foot on that in a minute or two. There's 93, Blondie Melbourne, and he's going well. Look at the luck of it. He pushes that uh, 491 car out of the way and still doesn't get himself tangled up with the other one. Five laps have gone. 211 is second, and 56 uh, is in the third place. They're a little way back. Rondy Melbourne's got himself quite a bit of a lead when he snatched it from number 10, who incidentally has come back into the race just in front of him now. And that's our number 10 former leader getting the chop treatment from Blondie Melbourne for the second time running as they come to this uh, chicane. Blondie getting squeezed when he gets his front end clear. That's the risk. You get hooked and you're very quickly round. He's still keeping himself pointing the right way. Good driving by Blondie. Can he? No, he can't evade this. He can't evade that, as the uh, 826 car of Eddie George puts him round. Now, Eddie George, in 826, a stock car driver, has shot himself up into third place now. He's a man who, uh, if we get a chance to see him without his skid lid on, it looks as if his hair slipped because he's bald on top and has got an enormous bushy beard. One of the real characters of stock car racing who enjoys coming out and having some fun uh, when it comes to the bangers. And he's, in fact, in uh, third place. Two double one has now moved up into the lead. Chris Megler is up into the lead, and 93 has got himself out somewhere along the way. Chris Megler is the leader. 826 Eddie George has now gone up into second place, and 56 Harry Dent is third. So those are the placings uh, as we come a little over halfway. Eight laps have gone. 2 1 1. Chris Megler still the leader. Chris Megler's got himself, what, about a quarter of a lap on this much depleted field. And that car really uh, relatively undamaged and going very, very well. It's nine completed, there's five more laps to go next time. I think the only hope of the others catching Chris Medler is if he gets himself hooked up with some of the slower cars somewhere along the line. But he really is going to have his... Uh, the others have really got their work cut out to catch him. Morris Jenkins has got problems of his own, slight uh, restricted visibility.
and he's, he's making out remarkably well. Eddie George going to give him a helping hand, knowing Eddie, if he gets just a chance, he'll soon push him round. Look at him nudging at that back end. And the A26 ought to be pushing on further to try and get up and catch that leader, but perhaps he's given up and he's going to have some fun while he's doing it. 242 is going to go for the chop if those boys get a chance. But Chris Medler really laughing at them. He really has got it sewn up, well and truly, just skating his way through. 2-1-1, just comfortably cruising away through there. Really disregarding the opposition, picking it off at will as he goes through. 482, Ted Yates is the next man to get the chop, and it's as easy as that. Got himself into the loose as he came through. Relatively undented, no steam coming. Still got enough steering to drift it through that bend, perfectly under control. And he really is a long, long way behind. He's got probably a couple of laps in hand even on 8.26 and 3.27. He certainly lapped 8.26, who uh, was in second place last time. Well, that, perhaps that's the explanation. How come he managed to win the World Championship in two consecutive years? And a lot of the opposition, 8.26, I can see now, is, uh, is hard against the fence on the far side. He was the man who was in second place. 2.42, Morris Jenkins, in fact, has moved up into second. 1.49, uh, Trevor Handley is third. But they're all a long way behind. None of them are going to catch uh, the 2.11 car of Chris Medler. 1.49 is second. A whole gaggle of cars coming through, but they're all back markers, including one that decides it's better to go backwards than to go frontwards. There's only one more lap now for 2.11. luck the man has with him, avoiding spinning cars. Into the top bend for the last time. Out of the turn, checkered flag at the ready. Two laps clear of everybody else, 2-1-1. World champion Chris Medler takes the Bangor Jaguar race. Second place man is going to be a long way behind. It's 1.49, coming round the final turn. He managed to evade that mess. And here's Trevor Handley coming through for second. And, uh, well, the third man, if there's going to be a third finisher, is a long, long way behind. 